Hey guys, what's up? My name's Chopper and welcome everybody back to a brand new video on the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the top 15 rarest items in Minecraft. So this is basically going to be a list of a couple of different maybe animals or items or just interesting things in the game that it seem, seem to be extremely rare all things considered. So I hope you guys find this enjoyable. And as you guys are watching this video, I want you to let me know how many of these things on the list that you have found yourself in Minecraft. Before we jump into this today, if you guys could spare me a second to drop a like rating on the video, it is absolutely free and I'd appreciate that a lot. Uh, and of course, if you are brand new on here and you enjoy Minecraft content, make sure you do subscribe as well. And so with that stuff being said and out of the way, guys, let's get into the top 15 rarest items to find in Minecraft. So coming today at the number 15 spot, guys, is going to be sheep. Now, this is not just any sheep because you might be familiar with your games. There's all kinds of colors that you're familiar with in Minecraft, white being the most common. But there are a couple of colors in this game that spawn at extremely rare rates. For example, a brown sheep only has a 3% chance of spawning within the sheep spawn pool. And just that alone is pretty rare in and of itself. 3% is really not a lot, and it's going to be a long time before you come across a just brown sheep that's naturally spawned in, but what's even rarer than that is a pink sheep. This particular color of sheep literally has a 0.16% chance of a spawn rate, and if you are unfamiliar with these kind of odds and just on how grand scale that is, let's say roughly you had a million Minecraft sheep spawn, an actual million sheep, only 1,600 approximately would be pink sheep. So needless to say, good luck finding one of these in the wild. Coming in at the number 14 spot, guys, is going to be the Enchanted Golden Apple, or otherwise known as the Notch Apple. Now, the most common spawn points for these Golden Apples, the Enchanted versions, are going to be in Dungeon Chests and especially Desert Temple Chests, but even though that these are the most common places to find them, that doesn't mean they're common overall. In fact, this particular item is so incredibly rare that many Minecraft players only ever have reported that they found the Golden Apple in a chest, that's the regular standard one, that a lot of Minecraft players don't even know that the enchanted version exists. And not only that, but with these enchanted golden apples, it's really important to know that you're ever only really going to find one at a time. It's it's pretty much impossible that you're going to find more than one in a single chest. It just realistically isn't going to happen. Now, you can definitely craft this item if you so wish to. However, instead of using just regular gold ingots in order to make the regular golden apple, you're going to need to use gold blocks, which requires you to burn through way more of that resource than you otherwise would. But this is hands down the best healing item in the entire game, so it's it's absolutely a sought-after item, and for good reason. But now, coming in at the number 13 spot, guys, is going to be the Heart of the Sea. Now, this item's pretty interesting because it's a kind of one component to a bigger thing you can make, which is the conduit, and you're also going to need some shells for that. But what you can do with the Heart of the Sea, or basically where this is found, is inside of buried treasure chests. So, practically speaking, the only ever way you're going to come across this is if you do some aquatic exploring, which really not every single player is up to. Now, the good thing about this, however, is that this basically spawns in all of the buried treasure chests that you'll find, roughly speaking, but the, the problem is the rarity is in those buried treasure chests themselves. So, those can be a little bit tricky to find sometimes, but you can guarantee that if you find at least a couple of those, you're, you'll have a couple of hearts of the sea. All right, coming today at the number 12 spot are going to be music discs. Now, these things in and of themselves aren't super rare, and you probably have at least come across these in your games at some point, but the thing is, overall, collecting all these can be quite the task. To collect all these discs, you're definitely going to want to check a lot of dungeon chests, and especially woodland mansion chests as well. Unfortunately, with these music discs, you cannot end up crafting them, so if you're going to obtain them, then they need to be found by any means necessary. But a lot of these discs play any range of music from like really upbeat sort of music to some honestly kind of creepy tunes. So really, whatever you into, they got you covered. But moving on here and coming in today at the number 11 spot is going to be mob heads. So these things are pretty interesting because the way that you obtain all the different variety can change drastically from mob to mob. So it's honestly, there's not one surefire way to get them all. With wither skeletons, in order to obtain this head that you can actually wear on your character, it needs to be killed by a wolf that you've tamed. And even if you manage to do that, it still only has a 2.5% chance, roughly speaking, of dropping that wither head. And as it turns out, that's one of the easier ones. If you want to get the other mob heads, the way you do this is they need to be killed by a charged creeper's blast. And the way that that happens is the creeper needs to be struck by lightning. So in order to obtain a lot of these mob heads, a lot has to go your way and really sort of fall into place perfectly for you, or else you're just not going to get these. Also, dragon heads can easily be obtained. They're on the ends of the end ships. But if you end up obtaining some of these mob heads, you can either wear them on your character, which looks pretty cool, I can't lie, or you can just kind of put them in your house or whatever base you have as like a little bit of a trophy. They look awesome on like shelves and things like that. But I gotta say, mob heads might be one of the coolest or honestly one of the most frustrating things to try to obtain in Minecraft. Another little known fact about the mob heads is that if you're wearing these at night around enemies, it takes them a lot longer to recognize you for who you are. You have to get a lot closer before skeletons and stuff will pick up on you. So it's a really nice disguise if you want to kind of traverse the night a bit 
safer. All right, guys, moving on and coming into number 10 are going to be sea lanterns. Now, I think the sea lanterns are seriously one of the coolest things as far as like the aquatic environment goes because they're essentially torches that are underwater. They do exactly what it says on the box. They light the way, especially within like underwater aquatic ruins and, and, and places like that. But the way to obtain these is a little bit tricky. You need to ideally have a pickaxe with silk touch on it because otherwise, if you try to mine this thing, then it's just going to break into prismarine crystals and you're not going to actually get the sea lantern. You can craft it if you have all the ingredients, but I find it easier just to get these sea lanterns straight up themselves. They're so great for exploring underwater or if you want to kind of have your own base underwater, like any sort of glass structure you want to be able to see out in the environment. And then the sea lanterns light it up really nicely. So they're a great item, but they are a little bit rare to find for sure. All right, guys, coming in today, the number nine spot is going to be chain armor. Now, the thing this armor is not quite as good as you might expect it to be. It's especially not as good as iron or even diamond armor. But the way that you obtain this, you need to take it off of other mobs. Unfortunately, chain armor isn't craftable. The way that you can come across this if you so wish to is you can get it via trading, actually, especially with villagers. If you're lucky enough to come across it, it normally the villagers have pretty good deals in this kind of stuff. But if you are if you're not able to find that, they can be found very rarely in chests, but they're most commonly found on mobs that you need to take it off of. And odds are once you take down that mob and get their armor, it's gonna be a little bit damaged. Chain armor is just very mid-tier, especially when compared to the others. Like it's it's definitely better than gold armor, but it's nowhere near being better than iron. But if you wanted to obtain chain armor just to hang it up somewhere and have it as kind of like a trophy or like the symbol of honor, I'd, I'd recommend doing that with it instead. It's more useful. Now coming to today, the number eight spot, guys, is a gas tier. Now the thing is, this item itself isn't super rare, but just like some of the other items on this list, the method of obtaining it can make it pretty tricky. Getting one of these, first of all, at least requires you to be in the nether, and then also you need to fight a ghast and successfully kill it, and when you do that, it's either going to drop one tier or it's going to drop none at all. If you have looting as on your tools, then you could probably get a little bit more, but generally it might not even drop anything at all, and even if it does drop some tiers, odds are, depending on where you're fighting them, they could fall into the lava. That's very likely. But the gas tier is certainly worth going after because it's it's a component that you need in crafting a lot of different potions and things like that, so it's not something you want to completely sleep on. Coming today, the number seven spot, guys, is going to be horse armor. Now, this is not the, like, incredibly hardest thing to come across in this game, and in fact, this is something you can craft yourself if you really want to, but certain types of this are very, very rare. Diamond horse armor has a super low spawn rate, being at less than 5% in most cases that you're going to be checking chests in. I personally find horse armor to be one of those things where if you haven't came across it in all the chests that you've searched in your time exploring, then if you have enough just to kind of throw diamonds around and spare some, you might as well just craft it, or at least iron horse armor is pretty easy to craft. But there's no doubt for sure that if you didn't craft it, then just finding it naturally is not an easy feat. Coming today at the number six spot, guys, is going to be the end crystal. Now, you can find these automatically if you go and fight the end dragon, and what's going to happen is that these are going to heal the dragon during the fight. So you need to destroy these when you're actually fighting him. But what's so cool about these items is that, yes, they are rare so because they're kind of only in this boss fight, but you can actually craft them as well with a couple of different tools that you're going to need, the gas tier being one of them, and you can literally resurrect the dragon when it's set up correctly. Doing this, however, your end crystals are going to explode, but hey, you got the dragon back at least. So yeah, these items are indeed pretty rare, but they absolutely have a ton of use associated with them. So coming at the number five spot is an item that I don't know if is super popular, but it's definitely a rare one, but it has its uses. This is going to be the beacon. Now, this is an item that not only serves its purpose as being a source of light for people to see, but it also can provide like ability buffs when players are around it. Now, the way that beacons are best used is you need to build pyramids around them, and that can get a little bit confusing. So if you know how to use beacons, then this will probably come naturally to you, but the beacon itself can be a little bit tricky to build as you need a nether star if you're going to be crafting it. But generally, some of the abilities that this rare item can give you are like it can increase your speed, it can increase your resistance, or even jump boost. It's a very rare item to come across, especially in survival, but uh, if you're able to get this and also the pyramid around it, it can be a very useful tool to you. Coming in today, the number four spot is going to be the saddle equipment. Now, this is one of the weirdest items in the game because you'd figure this would be craftable just by like using leather or something, but you actually cannot make this item yourself. It needs to be found in chests, or oddly enough, you can even fish this out of water, but less with less than a 1% chance to pull this out. It can also be traded for by villagers, which can be somewhat rare, but you'll probably have a surefire way to get it there. But yeah, it's just one of those items that's really strange because it's such a simple concept that you'd figure you'd be able to build this, but uh, no, it needs to be found somewhere.
All right, guys, we're moving on here and coming in today to the number three spot. I, I think this is something a lot of people forget about. Anybody who doesn't really know a lot about Minecraft or maybe he's just generally heard about it will probably think that diamond is the rare side in the game. And for good reason, right? It's, it's probably the most sought after material in this game, but it's not quite the rarest when it comes to mining. That would have to go to emerald. Now, the special thing about emerald ore is the fact that it only spawns in mountainous biomes. So a lot of the portion of the map that isn't a mountainous biome is going to be completely cut off and just unusable if you're going to be searching for emerald. Emeralds. And the thing is also every other ore in the game can spawn with multiple of the resource in inside of that deposit except emerald. You're only ever going to get one out of this unless you have like an enchantment on your tool that you're going to be mining with it in order to get more. If you're wanting to get emeralds, I highly recommend that you go to villagers instead as it's way easier to trade for. You can literally trade leather for emeralds and it's so it's so much simpler than having to mine the ore yourself and then smelt it down and stuff. It's just not worth it. Also, these are only really good for trading, and you cannot make any tools or armor out of this kind of uh, material, so it's, it's not really worth putting so much time into. Just trade for it. But moving on and coming in at our number two spot is going to be the Totem of Undying. Now, the way to obtain one of these items is you need to take down an Evoker, which can be quite the task in and of itself. But if you even end up managing to take one of those down, it will drop you a Totem of Undying. And what's so great about this is this is basically a self-revive. If you end up getting too hurt, if you have this in your offhand or in your main hand, then this will revive you upon death. Because the effects of this item are literally so good, then it has to be incredibly rare to find and come across one of these. And it's really only a one-time usage as well. Like, you use it, you lose it. So it's something, if you come across it, it's something to literally hold on to, that's for sure, especially if you get into a bit of a dicey fight and you don't want to die and lose all your stuff. But you are going to have to put some time and effort into getting this one, that's for sure. But finally, guys, coming today at the number one spot of the rarest item in Minecraft, it has to be, it would be a disgrace if we didn't give it to the Dragon Egg. Now, this is truly the only exclusive item in the game where literally only one is going to spawn for you. And this, of course, spawns when you beat the Ender Dragon. Now, since this item, like I said, is literally exclusive to that one game if for whatever reason you do something to lose this dragon egg then it's gone out of that world forever and uh, there's really no way of reobtaining without starting a new world so be careful when you're uh, obtaining this and since it has no real practical effects or advantages to having this dragon egg you might as well just wear it as a trophy and keep it somewhere safe if you ended up getting it on a survivor world that was like a completely legit run because uh, it's a pretty cool accomplishment Anyways, guys, that is going to be the top 15 rarest items in Minecraft. I really hope you guys did enjoy the video, and let me know down below in the comment section how many of these rare items that you've gotten before. And also, if you feel like I missed anything as far as rare items that I should have included on this list, definitely let me know what that is down below as well. But anyways, guys, thank you for watching the video today. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you are brand new for more videos like this. I'd appreciate that a lot. And uh, I will see you guys on the next stream or the next video. Take it easy, and peace out.